Hi everyone! Today I will show you how to convert your Python files into Android applications using Windows. Mm -hmm. Windows! For this, we will first create a Python app with either Kiwi or KiwiMD, and if you guys are not quite sure how to do this, don't worry. I actually have a few very handy tutorials on the subject, so just pick any of the links in the description of the video, and once you're ready, let's start compiling. We will begin by setting up a Windows subsystem for Linux, which is basically a Linux terminal that we can run from our Windows system. For this, we will need to open our PowerShell. So we will navigate to the Start menu, we will type Power, we will then click on the right mouse button, and we will run it as Administrator. Then we will navigate to the official Microsoft installation instructions, which you can find in the description of the video. I already have it ready in my browser. We will then scroll and copy the command under step one, and we will paste it inside our terminal and hit enter. We will then scroll a little bit more we will copy the command from step three and we will paste it once again inside our terminal. And once again, we will hit enter. And then we will restart our computer for the changes to take place. And once we have restarted our computer, we can go ahead and download the Linux kernel update package just by clicking on the link. And we will then install it on our computer. In my case, I already have it installed, so I'm just gonna click on finish. We will then open our PowerShell once again as administrators, and we will type WSL, which stands for a Windows subsystem for Linux, followed by two dashes and then set dash default dash version space two, which is the current version for August 2021. We will then hit enter. And now we can go ahead and install Ubuntu. So we will navigate to the Microsoft Store. We will search for Ubuntu. And my choice would be the regular Ubuntu app, even though you can choose any other. We will install it. And before we launch it, let's first download the code we would like to convert. We will navigate to my GitHub account and we will select the binary to decimal repository. We will then download the code. We will extract this archive, preferably somewhere near the root folder, which in my case is C users Maria documents. And we will dispose of all the files we will not need. So we will navigate to the Android pre-built folder and we will copy all the files, excluding the build dozer file, which we will build on our own. So we will copy logo and main as well. We will paste it inside the folder we created for the archive and we will dispose of the rest. Now, one thing I should mention is if you're watching this video years after I filmed it, you will most likely need a newer version of the ADB server, which includes all these three files. We will talk about them in much more detail shortly and I will show you where you can download different versions of them. But for now, your life is slightly easier because I've included everything in the project files. Now, the tool we will use to convert our Python files into Android files is called Buildozer. And it works in particular with Kiwi and KiwiMD GUI libraries. If you will try to use it with Kinter or PyQt5, it's not gonna work. So let's begin by installing it inside our new Ubuntu shell. For this, we will navigate to the start menu. We will open Ubuntu and here we will select a username. In my case, that would be Maria because that's my name. We will hit enter and we will then select a password. We will retype it. We will then navigate to the same directory where we saved our project files. We will do this with CD change directory now, the way to access the Windows file system through an Ubuntu terminal is slightly different than what we've used to. So instead of typing C users Maria documents, we will type slash MNT slash C slash users slash Maria, which already sounds familiar, slash documents 
And lastly, the project folder, which is called B2D binary to decimal. And we will hit enter. Once the address appears in blue, we know that we are inside the correct folder. And we are ready to install Buildozer. For this, we will navigate to the official Buildozer documentation. Link is also in the description. And we will copy the very first command. But if we paste it inside our terminal and hit enter, we see that the pip3 library is not even installed. So let's install it together by first typing sudo apt update and enter. We will enter the password we have selected. And once everything is updated, we can go ahead and type sudo apt install python3 dash pip and we will hit enter. Yes, we would love to continue. And pip3 is officially installed. So let's paste this command once again and we will hit enter and boom, we have Buildozer. And then we will move on with installing the dependencies. Now, since we have already ran this command just a few seconds ago, we will not need to do it again. Instead, we will copy the next line of code and we will paste it in our terminal, enter. Then we will copy the next line of code, excluding the comment, we don't really need it, and we will paste it back inside our terminal. And now we have installed a virtual environment. Lastly, we will copy the very, very last line of code. We will paste it once again, hit enter, and boom, we have installed all the Buildozer dependencies. And now it's time to talk about the Android Debugging Bridge, also known as ADB, which I have briefly mentioned a few minutes ago. This bridge allows communication between our computer and our mobile device. And because we are using a Windows system, we cannot really use the Linux bridge that is accessed through our Ubuntu terminal. Instead, we will need to download a special Windows bridge and access it through our PowerShell. So first, let's find out which bridge version our Linux requires. We can do this by typing adb and then dash dash version. And surprise, surprise, just as we didn't have the pip3 library, we also don't have the adb. So we can install it with sudo apt install adb. We will hit enter. We will then hit the up arrow twice and we will check the version. And we see that our Android debug bridge has the version of 1.0.39, which is slightly older than the current version. And you are probably wondering, how do I know it's slightly older? So for this, we will navigate to the official Android developer platform tools, which is also in the description. And we will scroll a bit down. We will download the SDK platform tools for Windows. We will agree to the terms and conditions. Of course, we have read all of them. We will open the archive. We will open the folder and we will unzip the first three files somewhere on our computer. And then inside the same folder of the files we've just extracted, we will press shift along with the right mouse button. And then we will open the PowerShell window here. And then we can check the current version with dot slash adb dash dash version, which is indeed slightly newer than 1.0.39. But the only way for the conversion to work is if both our Windows bridge and Linux bridge match in their versions. That's why we will need a slightly older one. So we can close this PowerShell window. We can dispose of this temp folder. We can navigate back to our B2D folder where I have included the exact version I was just talking about in the project files. So if we press on shift and then the right mouse button, we open the PowerShell window here and we will type dot slash adb dash dash version. Once again, hit enter. We can finally begin our conversion. 
Next, we will connect our computer to our phone with a USB cable, and then we will need to set our phone to a developer mode. On our phone, we will navigate to the settings. We will then select about phone. We will search for the build number, and once we find it, we will press on it seven times. We will then enter our secret combination, and we have activated the developer mode. So now, when we navigate back to the settings, we suddenly have a brand new developer options option at the bottom of our menu. We will select it, we will scroll a bit down, and we will turn on the USB debugging. Next, we will initialize a bulldozer spec file inside our project folder. For this, we will type bulldozer in it and we will hit enter. And once we go back to our folder, we see a brand new file was created. So let's go ahead and open it. Inside the file, we will select a title for our app. In my case, that would be number, base, converter. And then we can select a name to the app, which is base, converter, in camel case, because we are not allowed to use spaces. We will then scroll down a little bit and we will need to add some specific requirements. Now, simply specifying Kiwi will not do the trick. We need to be very particular with the version of Kiwi we used to create our app. In my particular case, I've used Kiwi 2.0.0, but that's not all. I have also used Kiwi MD in the version of 0.104.1. Very specific. And since my app includes a logo, I will also need to require Pillow, which is an image processing library also known as Pill. And here we luckily don't need to specify a version. So we can go ahead and save this file with Control S and it's time to turn on our Android Bridge server. So as you remember, we will access the PowerShell. We will type dot slash ADB start server and we will hit enter and then we will see if our phone is detected by the powershell so we will type dot slash adb devices enter and we can see a device was found which means our server is running our phone is in developer mode and it is connected with a usb cable to our computer only then we will type bulldozer dash v android debug and we will hit enter and hello hello to our very first error so if we scroll up a little bit we see that we have an issue with permissions but we can fix it by typing sudo mount dash t drvfs and then our c drive and then our linux version of c drive which is mnt c then dash o and finally metadata we will hit enter we will type the password and let's give our conversion another try we will hit enter and right now it looks very promising so we will hit y we will hit enter now this process may take you quite some time and when i say quite some time i actually mean something along the 20 minutes range maybe a little bit more depending on your computer cool and when we see those two beautiful beautiful messages we know that our app has finished compiling and then we can navigate back to our b2d folder where we see two brand new directories were added. We will then find our APK file inside the bin directory and we will copy it into our mobile device, which I already have here. So I'm just going to open it in a new window. I'm going to access my downloads folder and I will paste it here. Then on our phone, we will navigate to my files we will then select the APK installation files. We will select download and we will tap on our newly compiled APK file. We will select install 
then install anyway. We will hit don't send and then we can finally open the app. And here's our gorgeous app. Now, if you guys cannot see the icon at the very top right of our menu, don't worry about it because I'll show you how to fix it in a moment. For now, let's quickly test the app. So we will type 101, which in decimal means five. We will then add 0 0.001 and perfect, it looks like it worked. Then we will hit on the flip button, which will work even if you can't see it. We will then type five, which is exactly what we expected. And then we will try with 5.125, which is also a perfect match. And then if we type a weird string, which is not a number, even then our app doesn't fail. And surprisingly, everything is rainbows and butterflies. But the last time I've been compiling the exact same app, I had a lot of issues with displaying the toolbar icon. Now, if you guys encountered the exact same issue, there's actually a solution on GitHub. So the way to solve it is to navigate to the Python for Android GitHub repository and to press on fork, which will create a copy of this particular repository on your GitHub account. Then we will navigate to our B2D folder. We will open the bulldozer directory. We will go to Android. We will then hit platform, then Python for Android, and then Python for Android. Once again, we will then access the recipes and we will scroll down. We will find the SDL2 TTF folder and we will open it. We will then double click on the init file and we will change our version from 14 to 15. Then we will save this file. We will close it. We will return to our B2D folder and we will open our bulldozer file. We will then scroll to our requirements, which we can find here. And we will add an additional requirement, which is SDL2 underscore TTF. That's the same recipe we have just edited. And we will set the version to 2.0.15 instead of 2.0.14. But that's not all. We will also scroll much, much, much lower until we see the Python for Android P4A specifics, where we will replace Kiwi with our GitHub username. And the only reason why we can do it is because we made a P4A fork on our account. So we will type Maria Sha, which is my GitHub account, as you probably know. And then additionally, we will change the branch to develop. We will then save this file. We will close it and we will remove the bulldozer folder altogether. And once our bulldozer folder was deleted, we can go ahead and compile our app once again. Awesome. So now we have finally learned how to create Android applications with Python. Hallelujah. So I wanted to give a special thank you to all the lovely viewers who helped me with this project. I saw your tips. I saw your suggestions. They were absolutely incredible. Thank you. I also wanted to mention in particular Nikolai, also known as Delphi Niki, and Winston, also known as Wintash. Thank you so much for sharing your GitHub code with me. It helped me a lot. Now, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you found it useful, please give it a like, maybe subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment, turn on the notification bell, or even share this tutorial with Android developers who are still, for some reason, not using Python. Let's force them. Now, I will see you guys very soon in a brand new machine learning tutorial, so don't go too far.